There comes a time in every development project where you've learned enough to look back at the code you've written at the beginning and say, how did this ever work? How did this massive pile of spaghetti ever function? And how on earth am I going to scale this into bigger things? When you reach this point, there's pretty much only two options. Either you can scrap the whole project and move on to something new, or you can do a full rewrite. I reached this problem with Gearflux about three months ago. I looked back at the code I'd written in the start and found absolute spaghetti, nothing scalable and nothing I could continue to work with. But I'm not quite ready to be done with this project yet, so I decided to do a full rewrite. In this video, I'm going to talk about four different things that I've done to improve Gearflux systems and hopefully build a more scalable future for the project. But before we get into that, I just want to say a huge thank you to my channel members who make this all possible. If you're interested in becoming a member, click the join button below the video. So as many of you know, Gearflux uses a dynamic server scaling system. This means that it spins up and down servers according to the load. Now my original system for this was far less than ideal. It only supported one proxy and basically routed all the traffic through one singular point. The problem with this is that not only do you have a single point of failure, but it also prevents the program from being scaled scalable because you can only make one machine so powerful and because it's not distributed that machine has to process all of the connections. This central point of failure was the proxy. It was basically handling everything from server connections to general Minecraft protocol stuff to spinning up and down servers and matchmaking. Now as I said before the problem with this is that there's one single point of failure. Basically if this proxy goes down the entire network goes down and also it's not scalable because those systems can't be distributed across a fleet of different machines. Because of this it means that there's a limit to how far we can scale the server because the machine running the proxy directly influences the performance of the server, and you can only make one machine so powerful. So we have to find a way to distribute these systems across many different machines and make them scalable. Now luckily for me, I'm not the first person in the world to want to do something like this. And there's an architecture people use for this kind of system. It's called microservices. Microservices are essentially where you build a whole bunch of different applications that all run individually, and then you connect them together with something like gRPC or GraphQL. Usually the services running inside this kind of architecture are containerized, meaning they'll use something like Docker, which again is useful because we're already using Docker for our servers. And it also means that we can distribute this with Kubernetes and we don't have to manage container orchestration ourselves. With my newfound knowledge of microservices, I decided to split the Gearflux systems into their own microservice, a server orchestrator, which would manage the allocation of servers and proxies, and the matchmaking service, which would handle player matchmaking. And yes, you heard me right, proxies. Because the system is split into many different microservices, none of the matchmaking or server orchestration code happens on that singular proxy anymore, which means the only thing that the proxy does is handle player connection. Connections. Because of this, we can now have theoretically as many proxies as we want, because all we need to do is connect all the servers to all the proxies, and it doesn't matter what proxy you're connected to, because it'll always route you to the right backend server. This whole system allows for far more scalability, because the only thing that we'd need to do if more players connected is spin up more instances of the proxy or the servers. Essentially, everything is distributed, so it's infinitely horizontally scalable. It also means that the proxies aren't responsible for handling all of these calculations with the matchmaking and the server orchestration anymore, which means they can be lighter. Which brings us into our next issue, server performance. Pretty much anyone in the Minecraft community will tell you how horribly optimized servers are. Even the cutting edge technology like paper still requires gigabytes upon gigabytes of memory and hugely powerful CPUs to support many players. And even with massively powerful machines, player counts usually cap out at around 300. Now, this is okay because we have a distributed system, but it's also a huge race of resources to process all of this extra stuff that we don't really need. For example, if we're just running a lobby server, there's not really much point to have mob AI or or terrain generation, or any of that extra code taking up extra memory. So what's the solution to this? Well, the answer comes in the form of a new Minecraft server software called Mindstorm. Now, I don't really know if server software is the right word for it. It's more like a framework for building servers. Mindstorm comes with very little functionality by default. The whole point is you build everything yourself. This means that there's no extra overhead because if you don't need a system, you simply don't implement it. It's also a far nicer API than the Bucket API, which is pretty janky from all the years of forks and clones and rewrites and everything else that got shoved onto this ancient API. Mindstorm is a much more modern, cleaner way to work with Minecraft server code. And after seeing the stuff that the Mindstorm community has been able to create, I was pretty convinced that Mindstorm would be the right choice for my server. Now, like I said before, performance is a big deal. And fortunately, Mindstorm helps us significantly there too, as not only is it far more lightweight because of the extra overhead that doesn't have to happen, because you don't have all these bloat systems that you're not actually using, it's also just a far more optimized program. This is mainly due to its efficient use of multi-threading. Well, that's our servers taken care of, that's all cleaned up and optimized.
optimized, but how about the proxies? What can we do there? Well, this one was a bit tougher, because the proxy I'm using is called Velocity, and it is quite optimized, and it is written from the ground up by the same developers who make paper. However, I thought we could do better, because I don't really need very many features for the proxy, just a basic thing that can handle server connections and route players. I set out to search for something that was better. Luckily for me, a member of my Discord kindly recommended a new proxy written in Golang called Gate. Not only is this proxy much faster because it's written in Go, it also requires far less resources. Just for comparison, the original Velocity proxy with one player on it took about 1000 to 1200 megabytes of memory. The new proxy takes just 11. That's right, 11 megabytes. That's over 100 times less memory. That pretty much means that with the same amount of memory, I can run 99 more proxies, which is obviously a massive improvement. Go is also an interesting language that I've been wanting to learn, so this is a perfect opportunity to dive into it. So overall, between Mindstorm and Gate, the new system uses far less resources. Before, a game server or a lobby server would take about a gigabyte to a gigabyte and a half of memory, now it only takes around 400, and the proxy would take about a gigabyte of memory, now it only takes 11 megabytes. Obviously these are huge performance improvements. Not only that, but the startup time for the old game servers with paper was around 30 seconds. The new ones with Mindstorm is about 500 milliseconds. Now the final thing I want to talk about is Void Rush. Void Rush has had many iterations over the course of its development, however I'm not really happy with it in its current state, so I've decided to redesign most of the systems to create something that kind of resembles the original game, but in practice has many differences. For starters, I don't really see any reason why the game should be played in the sky. Originally I had liked the idea of a Bed Wars style map, but I think honestly it's just holding the game back, and I would rather move to more land-based ground maps. The next change is I'm going to remove Void Traders. Personally I don't think they add much to the game, and I think there would be better methods of doing the same thing. Instead of void traders, I would have randomly spawning cash out points that you have to defend for a certain amount of time to cash out your void ore, similar to something like the finals. Instead of having a void trader that every player owns, there would be a random shop that pops up around the map where you can trade void ore for powers. I would also remove the soul shard system as I don't think it adds anything to the game and just creates confusion. I would also remove the elimination system from the game because I don't think that it's very much fun to have teams get eliminated. Rather than that, I would have a placing system where teams with the most void ore would get the higher spots. Again, similar to something like the finals. All of these changes I think will help make the game stand out more and make it a bit more unique, as well as more fun to play as it should remove some of the feedback loops and the issues with the current game. Now, the reason you haven't seen much progress from me over the past few months is honestly just due to these changes. Basically I've had to re-implement everything that I've written so far in these new systems. Now while some of the code can just be copied over, most of it I want to refactor because behind the scenes the structure of the code is quite poor, and as I learn new things I want to start implementing them to make my systems cleaner and more professional. So that's it, that's pretty much everything that's been happening with Gearflux over the past few months. Now, I have another question for everybody. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see some kind of survival server opened on the Gearflux network until the mini games and stuff are finished developing. I think that's pretty much everything for this one, so thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day.